What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Friday, July 16th, and we are going to talk some franchise deadline, reaction, extension, reaction to the extensions, and we are, as always, sponsored by... But light. If you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash pick six. Joining me, of course, Ryan Wilson and John Breach. What's up, boys? Hey, hey, hey. Um, Hello. If you're watching on YouTube, you may be able to pick up on the fact that we are sponsored by Bud Light. How would you tell? I, By my count, I see one, two, three, four, five, six. Is the light behind you the Bud Light light or something else, Wilson? No, I don't. It's okay. out, out of no, frame. That's fine. You got a giant cooler and two cases of seltzer on top of it. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that right? Ten product placement opportunities for Bud Light in this podcast. There's only three of us on here. And Debo's Debo has been sipping on a Bud Light too, no doubt. Debo's wearing his uh, Bud Light bathing suit and nothing else. We just can't see. I am. Oh, I'm gonna. I might wear my Bud Light bathing suit to the pool today. I can't believe you haven't done that already. I haven't been to the pool since my butt bathing suit. I mowed my lawn in my Bud Light bathing suit. That is the least surprising thing you could possibly And nothing think. else. <laughs> while you're listening or while you're watching, share a Bud Light with us. And you can do that by ordering your own Bud Light. Go to BudLight.com slash delivery now to order. Again, that's BudLight.com slash delivery. You go there. You enter your zip code or your address. It gives you a bunch of different options. You click one, you can order through Amazon. You have Bud Light through Amazon. What a world. Harris Teeter, Dine and Dash, or Grab and Go, I guess it's probably more appropriate. Uh, go get yourself some Bud Light. It's delicious. And while you're at it, get some uh, seltzer popsicles. Breach, okay. I know you've had one of those. They're delicious. That's all I can say about these things. And you, and you know what? They're low in sugar. Low in calories, which is, I know, I've been watching the sugar and calories, guys. We're getting up there in age, and they're delicious. They're tasty. I love popsicles, and it's even better if they're tasty Bud Light popsicles. By the way, if you want to see Breach's popsicles, if you want to see Breach's new haircut, watch this on YouTube, because his hair was, he looked like a a wild animal prior to this haircut, so you can appreciate it with him. Yeah, Wilson called my wife, made her tell me to get a haircut, and then I had to get a haircut. You know what else? I, I like that Bud Light, and I haven't tried these yet, but I'm going to. I like that they went the iced tea seltzer route. Yeah. I'm excited about trying those. And you can see those uh, behind Wilson, behind me. We don't know where breaches are. Uh, they're in my belly. Thank you very much. Give <laughs> me that big old helmet. Put some Bud Light up there. <laughs> um, and uh, I got to tell you, big Bud Light Lime fan. Big Bud Light Lime fan. Bud Light Lime yeah. is one of the premier summer beverages. It is the, yeah, it's a top five summer drink and it may be a top one summer drink. Yeah. And I mean, that's including like water. Yeah. I mean, big water fan here too. Love water. Yeah. Water. Take it or leave it. I'm out on milk and on water. Milk. Yeah. We, we're missing blanks. Big milk hot takes of the weeks or whatever that used to be called. Yeah. yeah. Old Sean Wagner McGuff killed any possible uh, milk sponsor. Who makes milk? <laughs> the cows, dummy. No, I mean, it's dairy, dairy sponsorship. Oat right? cows, if you like big dairy. Milk. Yeah, sponsored by mean, big dairy. This guy said, "Who likes milk, <laughs> or who makes milk?" <laughs> I mean, like Mayola. Is that a milk company? <laughs> that right? Like it's usually like local farms, uh, at least around yeah. here. I think Dean. I feel like Dean is the one I see. I don't know. Yeah, like Wegmans has their own milk. Oh, Pat, Pat, Mayola is a one. Okay. Who pet is pet big up there? Do you guys have pet? No. Oh. Oh. Duh. You know who the biggest milk company is? Cows. Kroger. No. No. Kroger. Well, I mean, all the grocery stores make their own milk. Like there's Publix milk, there's Kroger milk. It's Wagman's milk. What who's the biggest milk? And then can we please get Nestle? There you go. Not surprised. They have the Nestle Quick Bunny, and then they make the chocolate milk and the strawberry milk. Strawberry milk used to be the jam back in the 70s and 80s. Good Lord. Ooh, that was on special occasions. That chocolate milk came in the tin can. You had to pop it off. I think I got a fight in elementary school like, is it, over is strawberry it, milk. Is there a bundle <laughs> of strawberry in the variety pack? Um, Probably. Yeah, I think so. That's awesome, Breach. Who won the fight? You were the girl. Uh, 
Ah, I see what you did there, Wilson. Oh, oh, oh up high, down hard. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. We literally are having a franchise tag podcast. We've already spent five minutes talking about milk. I'll say something quickly and then we can get oh, to the podcast. It's going to take long to talk about the franchise tag extensions. Yeah, there's so, only one of them. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Mark, Ro- Mark Rober is, uh, you guys probably know him. He made like the, the fart machine. Yeah, we know package. him because you bring him up on every podcast. So I was watching something about him last night because I watch YouTube all the time because I'm a 14 year old. Hey, wait, what fart machine? Like the fart buttons? How people steal the Amazon boxes or the the cardboard boxes during Christmas time sometimes, you know, off people's front porch, the, the, the porch thieves, whatever they're called, porch pirates. Porch yeah, pirates. Yeah, yeah. So he he built like this fart machine inside a box. Is Reach drinking milk? He could be. And you this is a this is one of the best videos ever. He, a latte. he, actually, he actually he actually upgraded it. But um so the people would get I'm home latte. People would get home, open the box, and it would spray like fart spray, and he had cameras on it so he could film it, and it was just sort of getting back at the porch pirates. But anyway, I was watching a video about why his videos are so successful because he gets on average like 20 million plus views. And the biggest takeaway was the first 30 seconds is he just sells everything he's going to do, makes it dynamic. And I'm thinking we're the exact opposite of that. We spend 30 <laughs> minutes talking about milk, talking about every stupid thing under the sun. And, and you somehow, spend 30 minutes setting up that story about how he does it even better and literally the opposite. Right. In fact, you told the story the opposite way that he would have told it. <laughs> Well, I tried to do it quickly. We're so far oh, down the road. Like, here's how you get 20 and a half million right. YouTube views per episode. And here's how you don't. But also, we're not trying to capture the attention span of some Nimrod 14-year-old. <laughs> hey, we're on YouTube now. Brenton, that's insulting if there are 14-year-olds listening. No, our 14-year-olds are smart. Okay. Not the Nimrods that listen, listen to fart machine guys. Well, so does Wilson. What does that say about him? He's a NASA scientist. He's probably pretty smart. Is he really? He used to be, yeah. Steve he was is, handsome. He was, Steve's head is in his hands right now. But also, <laughs> Brinson's ultimate point is going to be nothing happens, so we have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> right. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll probably be a shorter podcast. Something that's did okay. happen in Carolina. I'm for the most part. Got a big old, uh, big old mailbag podcast coming to you on Monday as well. You can also check out the top 10 coach quarterback duos with Jeff Kerr in the feed as well. Good stuff on that. He actually ranked, you know, his number one was. Yeah, Joe Burrow, Zach, Zach Taylor, duh. No. Um, I guess it has to be Arians Brady. Yes. Yeah. Over Reed Mahomes. A nod to the Super Bowl. Very smart. I like it. Good call. So, today, or yesterday, excuse me, Thursday, July 15th, 4 p.m. Eastern, was the deadline for franchise players who receive the franchise tag from their teams to sign extensions with those teams. Those players are no longer eligible to sign extensions until after the 2021 season, which means that someone like Chris Godwin cannot be extended by the Buccaneers until after the season. And if they want to retain his services, they will have to franchise tag him a second time. Uh, this has happened with Dak Prescott in the past, and eventually the Cowboys caved and had to sign him to a massive contract before giving a third uh, franchise tag. So it's tough because the players now have to decide, do they want to sign the franchise tender? Do they want to take the guaranteed money on a one-year deal? It's insulting to the players to a degree because they feel like the teams are, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's basically the guy who won't propose, right? Yeah, I really like you. Yeah, you're fantastic, but I'm sorry. I can't ask you to marry me. It's what, it's Rich, what what's that? the analogy with that? And the how would you work the prenup in there? How's the prenup work on this analogy? Uh, this feels like the guy is taking you on the you know the the European vacation, but won't propose. So he's committing a lot. He he's saying, "Hey, I'm taking you on this ten thousand dollar vacation, but you know I can't buy you that engagement ring that costs five thousand. And it, it, you know the girl's right. like, I'd rather, "I'd rather have the ring than the vacation." So I'm willing to go on the two week vacation, but I don't know about two year commitment. Right. Gotcha. I mean, I don't know if that's how long a, a wedding commitment is, Ryan. Um, but yeah, I guess you can use two years. <laughs> yeah, we get we we renew our vows every two years, breach, because we love each other, but, <laughs> butthole. Except your terrible hole. husband. That's the old b hole on the podcast. Isn't that coming? Uh, I haven't used that in a while. You yeah. have to bleep that out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's technically a medical term. No, no. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, if I say it to my nine year old, I can you can say it on the podcast. Uh, that's that's in the podcasting rule book. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. I don't call my nine year old that, but we 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 make behold jokes to each other. If my seven year old says it, it can go in the podcast. No. It might be it might be rated R. Exactly. Robbie's Robbie's <laughs> X at this point. 
Again, uh, great, great anyway, parenting. the only deal that was done was the Carolina Panthers and right tackle Taylor Moten, who, according to, I believe, Adam Schefter first, Jonathan Jones of CBS Sports, com and CBS Sports HQ also had it. $72 million extension that includes $43 million guaranteed at signing. That is a big old Ooh. deal for Taylor Moten. The Panthers have confirmed the deal. Uh, old pal Darren Gant. Yeah. Now writes for Panthers.com. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. Yeah. He's right. uh he lives he lives in Charlotte and has always covered the Panthers for a long time and uh his boys with Bill Voth. Who uh, who runs their media department there, um, and uh, yeah, they confirmed it. They let me ask you confirmed. this. Um, I mean, that's great news for Sam Darnold. Uh, I don't necessarily know if the average NFL fan cares that much about Taylor Moten. Good for Taylor Moten's family as well. I who's think gonna, listeners of this podcast probably care. Yeah, but my question is, who's playing left tackle for the Panthers? The right tackle position is obviously tied up for a few years now. Well, like, they hope it's your boy from BYU. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of up in the air, to be honest. Because they, they have, have Cam a Irving. Guys, they signed Cameron Irving this offseason. They drafted Greg Little a few years ago. There's some buzz Greg Little might not make the team. Yeah, he was, yeah. 2019 yeah. second-round pick. Uh, Marty Herney picked him. So, you know, Scott Forrester, or Scott Fitterer. Who's Scott Forrester? Scott Fitterer, um, you know, and Matt Rule not necessarily tied to Greg Little. They haven't been very impressive. And that's why they brought in Cameron Irving, who former first round pick of the Browns was with the Cowboys journeyman tackle. Yeah. I don't not, know if you want him playing left tackle though. I don't think you want Cameron Irving starting as your left tackle. You don't want Greg Little either. So in a perfect world, Brady Christensen, who they drafted in the third round this year out of BYU okay. could be their guy to step in. And so be good there. news is Brady Christensen was really, really good last year. At BYU bad news is they didn't really play anyone. So yeah, he's, he's also, I guess I subscribe to this narrative. He's older. So it's, you feel yeah, like but Debo can tell you about old offensive linemen. Who's the Canadian guy that was a fireman, Debo, that didn't turn out to be that great for the Eagles? That was old Danny Watkins. Danny Watkins. Wow. Was that was that Andy Reid's last draft pick there? Sounds right. He was 26 years old when he got drafted. I mean, this that, don't that draft 26-year-olds. He's that, a Brandon Whedon of offensive tackles. <laughs> I mean, don't just don't draft old people. <laughs> well, you just wait a second. Make up your mind. You just said older is better. How, what's the cutoff? 23? Mm, 21. Oh, what? That's not even old. <laughs> You're the, you know how Prisco talks about he would be a great GM? You would be a terrible GM. <laughs> you just wish he watched. You go back and forth. Quite likely. Uh, but this is good news for Sam Darnold. But you're right. Left tackle is going to be a huge concern. Hopefully, Christensen can step up because the other two options don't look to be um, A1 choices. Uh, Andy Reed, did Andy Reid draft Fletcher Cox? I think he did. I think so, right? Was Lane Johnson Chip Kelly's first pick? Did yeah, because yeah, Lane Johnson was, was fourth the overall. He was going four and twelve. Who had a quicker turnaround from superstar to absolute and utter goat? Um, Chip Kelly or um, Josh McDaniel in Denver? Chip Kelly or Nick Foles? I just mean coaches who were like considered superstars and then Chip clearly Kelly or Carson Wentz. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I, don't know why I mean, so. if you're talking about head coaches, I would say Josh McDaniels. Because Josh I mean, McDaniels they still, did have two 10 win seasons. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I forgot about those because he gets so crapped on as the NFL coach the way things ended. It's because, sure. yeah, it's because San Francisco went poorly. And there are a bunch of people around the NFL who didn't like the idea of Chip. Well, Kelly Sean McCoy good. accused him of being a racist, I believe. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, I think that that doesn't help your your name recognition, but I asked me Daniels. Didn't he, he started five and oh, six and oh, I think. And then yeah, six and oh, went to midfield and like was the Jonah Hill gif. Don't do that. Jo Josh. Yeah, but it was against the beat Belichick and he goes right. up. And he's just like fist pump. He's like, yeah, boy, gotcha. Sucker. And Belichick's like, are you kidding me, Josh? Like, yeah, he, he made the, the Ryan Howard note, uh, yeah, from the yeah, office yeah, note. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then Josh McDaniels wasn't welcome in, uh, in, in New England for a couple of years. Had to come groveling. That's why he was at St. Louis, which we'll yeah. talk about on the mailbag. Uh, anyway, a $72 million, what do we say, four years? I think so, yeah. Four-year extension. So is, 72 yeah. divided by four. That is $18 million per year. That makes him, speak of the devil, ties him for second highest paid right tackle in the NFL along with... Right tackle. 
Lane Johnson. That's right. Oh, there it is. Behind only Ryan Ramchek of the Saints, uh, ahead of Jack Conklin, who signed that big free agent deal on an average uh, annual basis. Of course, we mentioned that $43 million fully guaranteed. That is equal to Ryan Ramchek's contract. Easily surpasses everyone else. The next highest is Conklin with $30 million. Um, Lane Johnson had $25 million in his. Big H Vitae from formerly of the Eagles now with the Lions got $20 million as a free agent. So this is a really big deal for Taylor Moten, who... A lot of people, I think it's interesting how this has kind of happened in the NFL now. It used to be if you were a good right tackle, teams would f- sort of force you to be a left tackle if you wanted to get paid. Now you can just get paid as a right tackle, and the Panthers see the value in playing Taylor Moten on the right side. They are not going to pay him a bunch of money and move him to the left side. They believe he's one of the best, one of the three or four best left ta- right tackles in the league, and they're just going to play him there. And I, I think that's a positive step for NFL teams and how they sort of construct their rosters and build out these offensive lines. Concur. I think one interesting thing when you talk about building an offensive line now is this deal is kind of a game changer because you look at right tackles, right? Haha. <laughs> and uh, they weren't making anywhere close to as much money. <laughs> oh, we missed! <laughs> as left tackles. And so when you're building your offensive line, your left tackle was your highest paid player. And that was it. No questions asked. Now you have Ryan Ramchek with a, a salary of $19.2 million a year. You have Lane Johnson at 18 million. And at first it felt like those were two outliers because after Lane Johnson, there was a huge $4 million gap before you got the Jack Conklin. And then even lower down to 10 million, uh, you know, one, Leo Collins making $10 million per year, and he's the fifth highest paid right tackle. So you're talking most right tackles in the league were making under $10 million per year. And now you have three guys who are at 18 million above. So this really shoots up the right tackle market. And when you're talking about teams trying to build an offensive line now, if you're paying your your left tackle $20 million, your right tackle $38 million, all of a sudden you have nearly $40 million eaten up just by your starting tackles. Uh, so in that sense, it's going to be interesting to see how this affects and impacts uh, building a roster going forward. That's a great point, Breach. For instance, the Eagles are sort of the, I guess, the format you would want to follow. Uh, you know, if we're talking about the, you know, you, you have Lane Johnson, you drafted him fourth overall in 2012. I just said the Eagles draft pick history. 2013, been. fourth overall. Zach Ertz, also a second round pick that year. Oh my man, Earl Wolf on that, uh, and Jordan Jordan Poyer, who ended up being a really good safety for the uh, for the Bills in that draft class as well. But you draft Lane Johnson, you pay him, you know, you keep him around. He's still a very good player, and then you draft Andre Dillard, who becomes your left tackle once Jason Peters moves on. So I think that's sort of how you try to want to structure it. If you're going to pay that right tackle or pay that left tackle in an ideal world, you figure out a way to to then you know get a low priced other cornerstone now what you end up in a situation the eagles hope they end up in a situation like the saints where you know you have the saints who are paying taron armstead uh what is he making 13 million a year and then you're paying ryan ramchek uh what do we say eight 19 19.2 million dollars a year so that's that's a lot of money for your tackles but the tackles are important positions in the nfl they are and right tackles even more important now indeed Okay, uh, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and talk about the rest of the guys who didn't sign franchise tags. Woohoo! So, uh, six guys, no, excuse me. Yes, six guys who did not sign contract extensions by the deadline. Worth noting, Dak Prescott, I guess he did get the franchise tag placed on. Was it a third or second? I'm losing my mind. I, I feel like they, it was some weird thing where they did it right as he was signing the contract, so that he couldn't be tagged again down the road. That's right. They had the deal done before they had to use the franchise tag, but they didn't want him to technically become a free agent. They couldn't sign the deal until he became a free agent or until they put the tag on him. So they basically agreed to the full contract, and then the second though they agreed to the deal, they placed the tag on him, and then they the two parties inked the contract. Right? Isn't that what happened? That sounds right. Yeah. yeah I totally forgot that. 40 million oh, a year. Holy crap. Yeah. This offseason <laughs> really moves quickly when you don't care about anything. 
Uh, Justin Simmons of the Broncos signed a deal and Leonard Williams, who was franchise tagged by the Giants, Dave Gettleman, not letting Leonard Williams go after trading for him, uh, gave him a big contract as well. So those three happened earlier in the offseason. The six that did not happen, wide receivers Chris Godwin and Allen Robinson, defensive backs Marcus May and Marcus Williams, offensive lineman Cam Robinson of the Jaguars and Brandon Scherf of the Washington football team. Marcus May of the Jets, Marcus ask, Williams of the Saints. Let me ask something quickly. Of these six names who got franchise tagged, only one, pick only one, who will be elsewhere in 2023. Well, allow me. Or wait, 2023? 2020, oh, yeah. 2022. Okay. Well, I'm on to the 2022 draft, so I was trying to skip ahead. On to 2022. Yeah. Uh, I guess this is a good time as ever to deliver my ice cold take presented by Ooh. Bud Light. Because it's, you know who's going to be going somewhere else in 2022? Who? Alan Robinson. In fact, Alan Robinson should go somewhere else in 2021. Screw you, Bears. You shouldn't have franchise tagged him. You don't want to keep him around. You're just dragging this poor sap through another season with crap quarterbacking. First, like he had to deal with Christian Hackenberg at Penn State. Then he gets drafted by the Jaguars, and he has to deal with Blake Bortles. Then he goes to Chicago. Now, granted, he, didn't, he chose to go to Chicago, and he got paid for it. But then he's got Mitchell Trubisky. Then... He's got to deal with Andy Dalton because you're giving him the franchise tag. You're going to make him play for the red ginger rifle instead of letting him walk free. Set this man free from bad quarterbacks. Allen Robinson, I beg you, buddy, go sign somewhere with a good quarterback next year. Please don't sign anywhere with a bad quarterback. Don't do it, Allen Robinson. And the Bears should set Allen Robinson free. That is my ice cold take presented by Bud Light. Well, that's your ice cold take number four, number three, as we do it chronologically as these podcasts come out. That's the best one so far. The other three are. Yeah, thank you. Are, uh, probably I, I, I would be the bears. Even if pace and Matt pace, Ryan pace and Matt Nagy keep their jobs. I would be very surprised if they tagged Allen Robinson a second consecutive time next off season. I think they believe, I think this is sort of a, we know our jobs are on the line. So we're going to keep, the good receiver around, even though we know he really doesn't want to be here type of situation. Sort of like AJ Green. Yeah, yeah I think Alan, Alan Robinson makes a sense. I'm going to go with Chris Godwin, though, but go ahead, Breach. Well, I was just going to say, if they do tag Alan Robinson again, that puts him up to $21.5 million, $21.6 million, which would be a ton to pay a receiver for one year. That yeah, would, it would be. I uh, want to go on Godwin. Did they tag him last year? No. He's in the final year of his deal. He doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have the same. So Godwin and Robinson obviously play the same position, but they're not at the same tag number because obviously the two things with the salary when it comes to a franchise tag is top five at your position, or if you already making above the top five at the position, you get 20% bump on your salary, which we don't hear about a lot because it rarely happens. Allen Robinson was making 15 million last year, so he was already in the top five, so he couldn't be bumped up anymore, so he got the 20% raise right. in his first salary which is why his number is higher his salary cap number or his franchise tag number is 17.98 million chris godwin's is 15.98 mm. good point breach fun fact great, great points breach yeah he signed a uh three-year 42 million dollar deal with the bears that ran through 2020 that's right mm. okay so i <sighs> The Godwin thing is interesting. I thought the I thought the the Bucks handled this perfectly. Remember, you at Breach asked me who I would franchise tag between you two, and I said I tag I tag <laughs> Breach because I don't trust. Him. Right. I, I could see Breach sneaking around and like going and signing with the Jets or just being like, I took a deal with the Bengals. Like Bengals dot com hired me. Um, like that's what uh, if if Chris Godwin hadn't been tagged, he would have gone and signed a huge deal with the Jets or something like that. Whereas Shaq Barrett, who they didn't tag wanted to stay and play. I mean, I think Chris Godwin would want to stay too. So th that's what I'm curious about. If they get to the end of the season, sort of figure out what Tom Brady's doing. You assume he's going to play another year after the season, but you never know at his age. And then you can kind of make a call with Chris Godwin. Um, Cause Godwin steal in the draft, another Penn state guy, both Penn state wide receivers, by the way. Yeah. And uh, I, I just would be surprised if the bucks let him walk. He's a really good player. Yeah, and actually looking at their salary cap space, they still they're expected to have twenty twenty one and a half million dollars of an available cap space for twenty twenty two, and that's not I'm assuming that's not counting the uptick in the cap that it will take this year, which it didn't take last year, much to breach's concern because of COVID. So 
maybe they'll still have the ability to to make something happen. Well, and that's the thing. You're, you're going to see an uptick in the cap in 2022. I think that what they say, the highest they can go up to is 210. So you could see a monstrous jump. That creates more room. I think Godwin stays. Sorry, Ryan, I didn't mean to contradict your prediction. If I had to guess on someone who's leaving, i say Brandon Chirp. I just think, I, that I think he, that's a good bet. Yeah, two, that two too, tags. But... You're not tagging him a third time. So he basically has all the leverage, and he's going to pull Kirk Cousins. I think camera, I think actually, I think three of these guys, Alan Robinson, Cam Robinson, and Brandon Scherf are all playing on different teams next year. And they'll probably, you know, get to spend the summer having fun, which is what we're finally getting to do because summer's here. That means only one thing. It's time to stock the coolers and start counting down the days until we can enjoy an ice cold Bud Light in an NFL stadium again. By our count, only 54 days remain until we can hear a beer vendor scream, Bud Light, get your ice cold Bud Light, right here in our, in our ears again. I don't know why I like screaming like a beer vendor so much. And to help take you tell, to help you take summer by the coolers and get ready to tailgate, Bud Light is giving away free coolers all summer long look over ryan wilson's right shoulder you can see this sick cooler that bud light is giving away it's jam ours came jam full of cool stuff like this hat that shirt that john breach is wearing plus those delicious bud light limes and bud light iced tea seltzers and the coolers sort of like a I don't want to mention a brand of any kind but it's big hefty secure will keep the ice cold for days perfect for tailgating, and you can get yours free simply by visiting BudLightLegends.com. Throw that, throw away that dusty ice box you have in the back of your garage and tailgate in style this fall. And again, all you have to do, if you listen to this podcast and you don't do this, I don't, I don't know what you're thinking. Go to BudLightLegends.com. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. So again, BudLightLegends, very easy, dot com, <laughs> and register to win a free cooler. Bud Light's given away. They're free coolers. Free, giant, awesome coolers. Perfect for tailgating. Perfect for the beach. You go down for that week-long trip at the beach. You need to keep your Bud Light cold because you can have one or two in the afternoon. You got to keep it cold every day. It's perfect, Breach. And if you're going camping, what does Wilson love to say? They're bear-proof. That's right. Oh. You're reading my mind. Or if your friends are bears, they can't get in it. <laughs> We're definitely going to get yelled at. Like, we never said the coolers were bear-proof. No, it says it right here. Is it, oh, is it really bear-proof? I thought you were making, doing like a North no, Carolina joke. I'll take a picture and show it to you, but absolutely. Yeah, no. I'm not. Uh, for real? No. Oh. The coolers are bear-proof! Um, <laughs> well, let me double check. You Bud, yeah, Light Legends, Bud Light Legends .com, Not only can you register for a free cooler, you can also... The Bud Light Summer Stimmy. They're advertising on BudLightLegends.com. You register, and they will give you a free beer as long as you're old enough. So go get your cooler. Go get. Oh, your here we go. Yeah, I was right. Look at that. I don't know if you can read that. Certified bear resistant. <laughs> really? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there's right. like an outbreak of bears in Raleigh right now. Bears are everywhere. There's bears at the beach. That's why you need this core at the beach because the bears might be there. They're not just in the woods anymore. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Stop. Breach. Please go on. Talk about the franchise tags. Breach made me confirm this. Thank you. Yeah, we were. We're talking about the Chicago Bears. And also these bears. We're talking about Alan like Robinson animals. cannot get in your cooler. <laughs> no, here's the thing, by the way, before we went to, you mentioned Cam Robinson, not likely to come back. Uh, the, the Jaguars drafted Walker Little as well, left tackle Sanford. So that could be the succession plan should they move on from Cam and, Robinson. And I think another interesting one I don't think we mentioned is Marcus May. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't return because of how that situation played out. Uh, apparently, according to, Ian Rappaport of NFL.com. You had Marcus May who sent an off offer in to the Jets. They didn't even respond to it. And their final offer before the tag deadline was 20% below the tag number. You're lowballing one of the best players on your defense. Like, what in the heck are you doing? If you're trying to turn your franchise around, isn't lowballing your one of your best players like literally the last thing you should be doing? So I don't. I, I would be surprised they have if Marcus like May three walks. good players. And Marcus <laughs> May is one of them, yes. and they're giving him. Hey, here's twenty percent below what we would owe you on the franchise tag. Uh, oh, they're yeah. just telling Marcus May. He's like, come on, man, we got to get a deal done. Let's let's hurry up and get this deal done. Here's an offer. Here's an offer, and they're like, nah, we're gonna low ball you again. Maybe they want to. And, and Marcus May was drafted by Mike McCagnan, not uh, 
not uh, Joe Douglas. So, Brenton, maybe your question should have been: Will any of these guys actually be playing uh, for their team next year? Yeah, that is a good question. In fact, it wasn't my question; that was, it was Wilson's question. <laughs> yeah, I think Wilson, Marcus, maybe I think your Marcus, question. <laughs> I think Marcus Williams will sign. I'm surprised he didn't work out a deal. I feel like he's the only lock. I think the box will keep Chris Godwin around, but it's definitely not a lock. And I would, I'd say Williams and and Godwin are the only two that are likely. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I mean, Cameron Robinson and Brandon Scherf feel very much like the same sort of situation where. Uh, team feel team probably didn't want to tag him or keep him around, but the Jaguars need to, you know, you point out they drafted somebody Wilson. They do need to keep Trevor Lawrence healthy and upright. So you, you keep the veteran around cause you have tons of salary cap space. And then for Washington, you know, they're a contender and they're a much better team with Brandon Scherf than without him. So in that instance, you know, you were trying to win the division again. You're trying to make it back to the playoffs and Ron Rivera's second year. And, I was gonna say you try to get Dan Snyder, you know, get Curry more favor of Dan Snyder. Apparently, Dan, Mrs. Snyder now is running the team. Um, that sort of flew under the radar, by the way. Yeah. And uh, so I think if you're Ron Rivera, you do believe you have a better chance at winning the division at making a playoff run with Brandon Scherf than without him. And you have the salary cap space. Why not tag him and keep him around? I, I think in a in a vacuum, both teams probably let their these guys go. Well, and one thing with the Cam Robinson, I know they drafted someone, but I also think this is a, a kind of make or break year for Cam because if you're Jacksonville and you know how Trevor Lawrence, if Cam Robinson is amazing this year, then you say, all right, you know what? We can tag him again, keep him around. And at that point, you're still paying him uh, barely over $15 million, which is great for a left tackle. Barely? Ah, ha, ha. We're, we're going to work in all the bear buttons. All, we need a bear button. Um, oh, I got one actually. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, he missed. He missed. Oh, and he may have pulled a hamstring or a muscle, and there is complete elation. Nothing sadder than when a bear pulls a hamstring. Uh, and then if you're Cam Robinson and he's not great, then you say, All right, bro, uh, bye. And you let him walk after <laughs> 2021. That's it. All right, bro. Well, bye. <laughs> uh, Cam Robinson is actually the, the, um, the subject of a uh, little bit of a battle, a little Twitter heat between Pete Prisco and uh, Duke Duke Mayweather, the guy who runs the OL Masterminds camp. Miniweather. Is it Miniweather? Yeah, it may end. I thought it was Mayweather. Yeah. Sometimes I just ignore letters in people's names. Yeah, you don't see you don't see people named Miniweather usually, so I understand. But anyway, yeah, they were they went back and forth. But I think they ended on good terms. Uh, it was well. I, I can't remember why they what they got in a fight about. Was it was it Cam Robinson the source of the fight? I think it started with Makai Becton because last year Prisco was dunking on Makai before the draft and no 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 that wasn't it. There was something that started the fight. It may have been Cam Robinson, but I'm not entirely sure. And then Duke was like, "Oh, Pete, hold on." And Pete's like, "I know what I know. You you you're entitled to your wrong opinion or something like that." And he, Duke he pulled out like receipts. seven just horrendous takes from Prisco on offensive linemen. It was just killing him for it. It was, it was, it was pretty funny. Learn the game. You got dunked on, Prisco. Uh, can you get Prisco in a dunk tank? Is that something we can do? Oh, that'd be fun. How much would you pay for that? Oh, I pay. How many softballs took it to throw at the dunk tank with Prisco in it? How about $10 for throw? No, yeah, $10 per throw. How many, how many would you $10 buy? $10 per throw. How about $10 for five throws? I was gonna say twenty for five. Just all right. It's not. It's a dunk tank with a shark in it. Oh, <laughs> and, and all the money's going to charity. Yeah, hundred dollars to throw. Well, the the first half is going to pay for Prisco's Jeez, funeral. Oh, yeah, yeah, hold on, it's, a, it's a dunk tank full of Jello and nails. No, how about a dunk tank with like a stinger, something that can't end your life? Stinger piranha, a snapping turtle, one piranha, <laughs> one piranha, uh, one piranha. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like this. It's a what. Uh, what if it's a dunk tank full of like um, mouse traps? 
<laughs> worse. There's no, no water. water. No, no water. water. It's just, just a thousand mouse traps. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay a hundred bucks per throw for that. That would be Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. That would be and fantastic. Christo can't get any vengeance on whoever puts him in there. He can't see who. No, he's he blindfolded. He's blindfolded. We too. would literally raise seven hundred thousand dollars for charity. <laughs> Oh, what a great so idea. Who so in the clear, NFL so media would pay $100 to make that throw? <laughs> if it was $100 per throw, per throw, how many throws would you buy? <laughs> I'd buy at least five. At I'd least five. five. Definitely five. Diva, yeah. how, many, how, many, how many do you think the average person would buy? Yeah, at least at least five. I, I was going to say I'd, I'd much rather be dunked into a tank with a shark than dunked into an open cage with a lion. <laughs> Oh, 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 good call, man. Good call. Uh, e, I don't know. Like, you're going to die either way, I feel like. So, how do you want to die? I think is the question. Oh, no, the shark. Oh, my God. You're just lying in the water, and the shark's just. Yeah, but it, at least you're buoyant. I feel like if you're on the ground, the lion's yeah, just. You can't, you can't even see the shark. Wait, no, it's, um, we did, I, the mousetrap idea is pretty good. By the way, I'm surprised Debo said lion and didn't say bear. I mean, that was. That's how, about, how about a lion fish? I think what Debo was yeah. referencing the previous podcast. Is yeah, I was going back to a mailbag from that was yeah. right after the season. I think I don't know. It could have been two years ago. I forget. Because I think in an open open space, you want lion, but in a confined space, I might actually go with shark just to get it over with. Um. So, but yeah, here's the, yeah. So mouse traps. If anyone would, has any other ideas about what we should do to Prisco in the dunk tank, I'm, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear them. I'm trying to think of the best possible non-lethal dunk tank situation mouse traps is pretty high i don't know what else that would be that sort of irritant that you could maybe irritant. like those would hurt. like you would you would oh my god it would hurt so much not not like the rat mouse traps it's only the little tiny mouse traps they would hurt a lot but they wouldn't it wouldn't kill you it would just it would it'd leave a bunch of welts all over your body uh yeah and prisco could only wear a speedo so it has to get on so the the mousetrap gets on skin I'm going to send this text to the thread right now. Let's see. Uh, how many do you think Jamie Eisenberg will say he'll buy? He would buy 10,000. Eisenberg buy would sell his house to buy more traps to throw. More <laughs> how, many tra how many balls do I get for a child? <laughs> Here's my firstborn son. Give me all the, the balls. Yeah, I don't know like what like similar to mousetraps that you could do that, that would be fun Ooh, to watch and pay. I know. All right. We'll give him goggles. Can you see out of the goggles? Yes. Okay. We're going to dump him into uh, a huge vat of diced up jalapenos. <laughs> oh, God. That's terrible. Habanero peppers? Would you rather go in a vat of habaneros or jalapenos or mouse traps? But here's the thing. I think with mouse the, traps just instant pain, and, and you're just trying to get here's the that. caveat for the pepper dropping. This is starting to get a little dark, but you have to get like five paper cuts on your body. Oh my god. So when you hit, so when oh, you the, oh yeah, you have to cut yourself like five times and you get but not, not, a, the paper cuts that, actually uh, the paper uh, cuts uh, don't hurt. Of lemon juice. Paper cuts before you go in with the shark. Yeah, but the paper cuts don't hurt. They they can <laughs> they can do it in a way that doesn't you're it's just, not painful. Bleeding. It doesn't hurt at all. You're yeah. Trust me, this won't hurt. Just lemon point. juice, lemon juice with diced up jalapenos in it. Yeah, this is this is uh, Debo, this feels like it might be um your wheelhouse here where you would think of something that's more creative. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. If you're looking for serial killer ideas, I think you're talking to the wrong guy. I could just see Debo having a creative brain here on something that would be a little less uh lethal. I think Debo's <laughs> brain for good. What do you got, Debo? Oh, I ended the podcast seven minutes ago. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, Did you really? this, I, I will I will mention this this idea had been floated around the office oh, uh, be a few years ago. <laughs> Boomer for uh, the draftathon, and oh. it didn't ultimately happen. You know, there's legal gets in the way <laughs> times, so can't stop me. Legal. By the yeah. way, Debo, we didn't do any of that stuff, but Brinson got knocked out twice by a wrestler. Right. I was telling somebody that story the other day. I didn't get knocked out. I got a. We can't do a dunk tank with Prisco, but Brinson can get a rude on awakening. the fly. They're just like, hey, can you throw Brinson through a table? It's like, no, what, nobody's throwing me through a table. I think that was a legal impediment as well. Well, no, no, no. Eric, so Eric Young is a great dude, a great fantasy player too, uh, and obviously a great wrestler, was like, look, here's the deal. I can either throw you to a, throw you through a table, and it's really going to hurt, Yeah, and it'll look gonna... real. <laughs> or I can throw you through Since a table, it, real. it won't hurt, and it'll look like crap. And I'm not willing to do that because I'm, you know, I'm an artist, and I, I, I you know, I, I do a good job of my career. So I said, all right, let's not throw me through a table then. 
And so he said, okay, here's what I can do, though. I can choke slam you. It's like, oh, well, I'll take that. That's better. <laughs> that's, he's like, no, it's easy. You just, because it, it's I mean, easy no, for him. You know what you're doing, right? You know what they do, right? Like, he's not, he didn't actually pick me up by the neck and slam me. Spoiler alert, Brinson. I know. Brinson humble bragging about getting choke slam is the most Brinson humble bragging. Brinson humble bragging about no how wrestling works because he thinks he knows. <laughs> right. You grab onto the you grab on you grab onto his arm and he's so strong that he can lift you up. Brinson just but, powering through as we call him out for humble bragging wrestling moves. <laughs> I'm how, that, how that works. Fine. Um, you know how that works, right? That's the Brinson start to the humble brag. Now I gotta mark this podcast as explicit, so no like anyone under the age of 14 doesn't listen and, and find out how wrestling really works. Oh, right. You hate for them to find out that wrestling's fake. It is. I can All see right. Wrestling's real. My heart's broken. If, Brent, if uh, Debo hasn't already concluded the podcast, That's are we done? Up. Yeah. I got to go to the pool and uh, enjoy an ice cold Bud Light. Hey, take uh, a picture with your bathing suit on and send it to us. I, I may. <laughs> should I show up to the pool with like, in a Bud Light shirt, Bud Light bathing suit with a Bud Light with my Bud Light. Uh, should I wear my Bud Light uh, bucket hat? Bucket Absolutely. Hat. And yeah. also dress up as a bear and then like fumble <laughs> around with the cooler so that everybody gets <laughs> knows that it's bear proof. <laughs> What's bear, are the it. bear proof? The cooler, dummy. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll let everybody. Act like you can't open the cooler when you're dressed up as a bear when you're Bud Light paraphernalia. I might mail this bucket out to you, Wilson. I think you'd look a lot cooler in a bucket out than me. I got one over here, but not a Bud Light one. But I would take it. Please mail it to me. All right, put it. Put it on. Let's wear some bucket hats. No, we'll do it next time. All right, let's get out of here.